Hi all, um, SV Tapatia. Yeah. We're building a, a cruising sailboat and we're trying to record that build uh, week by week, most weeks, nearly every week. We're getting a video out showing you the, the, the build of this boat and, and I'm building this boat mainly on my own. A bit of assistance from the kids from time to time, but mainly on my own. Part time, doing it in my evenings and, and weekends. And as I say, the, the purpose of these videos is really to record that build, that build and and show you know, how I go about it. We're at sort of a bit of an anniversary, although it's not an anniversary. Um, it's two and a half years since I started building this week. A few days ago, it was two and a half years from the start of the build. So maybe it's a good opportunity to have a quick look around the boat before we get into what's been going on this week. Um, some of you have seen this before, but there have been a, a number of new subscribers recently, and perhaps you haven't looked back over the old ones, and, and a quick look around the boat. See what we've done in two and a half years, what's been achieved, may be useful. So let's do that. Kerry, have a little scan of the hull. I'll turn back. So she's basically 32 foot long, plywood hulled, J. Benford designed sailing dory. You may notice there's no keel as yet. The keel's still to come. Keel comes on towards the end of the build. In fact, the keel will be fitted when we move her up to the boatyard to prior to launching. Um, but I'm going to go up on the foredeck. Okay. So foredeck looks like this. We've got a hole for the mast there, the partners. Um, it's oversized, but um, that's the mast partners. The f she's going to have two masts, so that's the forward mast, obviously. Bow fitting in place. This bow pulpit is only sat there at the moment, but it, it will fit. I was looking at it the other day, and I'm confident with very little modification it will fit. Comes with the nav lights, it's off, off a Halberg Rassi 32. That'd be nice on there. I'm happy with that. We've got a couple of big bronze cleats out here, which we fitted at some stage. And I'm sat on this little doghouse with a, with a deck hatch in it. Um, then looking up on the main deck, you can see these deck stringers, which, which are structural. In position, tow rail in position, another deck hatch. Um, the hatch turtle, you can see at the back for the, for the main companionway entrance hatch. 
Um, so that's all done and basically speaking the woodwork, the vast majority of the woodwork on this boat is, is done in that two and a half years. I've got, I'm working on the heads right now. In terms of woodwork I've still got a shelf that I want to put in the engine room and the lazarette will also have some, some shelving storage fitted. But that's about it for the main woodwork of this construction. So in that time, the woodwork has been done. Obviously this summer coming, it'll be a lot of finishing, we'll be painting, we'll be fitting hardware, the sort of hardware that I can fit and still get the boat out of the shed. Um, bigger hardware will be fitted once we've hauled her out. Uh, but that's where we are, fore deck and what you can see are the main deck. Let's go and have a look at the aft deck. Just before we go up on the aft deck, there's the, there's the aft end, it's a bit dark under here with a canoe right above my head, but you can see the, the stern post line, um, obviously a stern, no, not obviously, but it will be a stern, stern hung rudder going on here uh, with a large tiller will be the steering. So that's still to go, that will be another thing that's fitted once we've hauled her out of the shed, or actually will be fitted in the boatyard, but will be made once we've hauled her out of the shed. Um, got these black locust rub rails or, or the base piece for the rub rails in position running around the curve of the boat. Looking nice I think. We'll go up on the aft deck now. The aft deck, um, cockpit, nice protected feel to this aft deck with these big combings. Um, combings serve various purposes. The diesel filler will be in there. There are some storage boxes in these areas, in the areas a quarter berth below there. They make the cockpit feel very safe. Nice big companionway with sliding hatch. The lazarette is as yet mainly untouched, but we've got the, the basics of the lazarette hatch in place. Obviously needs hinging and catching. Big old tiller will come up to here for steering. Some instruments and compasses to go in, but as I say, woodwork wise, we're pretty much done. One thing that, that, that needs still doing is a cap on these bulwarks, so it'll be a hardwood cap on the bulwarks fore and aft. That's one of the last pieces of woodwork, as I said, storage in the lazarette and engine room. But we're coming on well, we'll go inside. It's a bit of a mess in here, work going on. I've just started working in the, in the heads. This is the heads area, um, bare at the moment. I've, I've sanded it up. I've cut a hole here for the vent. It's going to have a composting toilet that uh, has a vent with a small electric fan in it. The vent's going out there, so I've cut the hole in there. It's sanded up as I say, so we're thinking about some work surfaces in here and, and getting it painted up. But in the main boat, apart from the clutter laying around, the, the head itself there, up in the fore peak here, walk this way Jerry. We've got two functioning LED lights with the wiring in position and tidy. This week, what I did a couple of evenings this week, some tidy wiring with terminal blocks up in these, these, if you lean through you'll see these covers either side and up in the top end of those covers uh, a couple of terminal blocks with the wiring.
So that's in and working, which means the four peak is painted out and basically, basically done. Beyond finishing, real finishing off. Um, in the saloon, we're pretty much, we know we're completely painted out. The varnish on the bare wood is still to come. But these hatch boards were painted last week and they'll dry enough to put in position. It's nice. Full of clutter, as I say. But um, coming on, this week one major thing we did was to work on this area under the, the nav table. The other thing is done look, under the nerve table, all glossed out, looking good. So, in here, again, the saloon is ready for finishing, varnish, nerve table needs a good sand and a varnish. Fiddles, still got a fiddle to go down there, but fiddles ready for varnish, it's just about done, cushions to come. So it's where we are after two and a half years. Behind you there, Kerry, is the galley area that is rather cluttered at the moment, but um, also essentially there. Still some shelves, some storage to come. The sinks need fitting, the water pumps need plumbing, um, but, and a good sand up and paint out in here. But um, the, the raw woodwork is done. I'm pleased with that. It's moving into the heads this week. And behind you, Kerry, perhaps two things to see. It's a little dark in there, but there's a, the quarter berth there, which again is, to all intents and purposes, done, needs, needs painting. Good sand and paint. And once the, the galleon heads are finished, we'll be moving in here and into the engine room. If I stand back, it might help the light a bit. You see the engine in position, engine bed, engine in position, Volvo Penta with sail drive, the, the 2010 with sail drive in position. St still needs completely hooking up, wiring, fuel, fuel tanks not in. But the engine's basically there, a bit of reinforcement to that to come as well. But um, engine room still to, still to be worked on. Once heads are done, which should be in a week or two, should be done, we'll be into that engine room. So that's what two and a half years has achieved. Let's have a little poke around. Remember this, the old, the trusty old Volvo Penta MD1, um, which, as I told you way on back then, is progressing very slowly. But we've done a bit, or oh, I've done a bit more to the point. Um, as you can tell, it's mounted up on the stand now. Uh, got these brackets welded on both sides. Um, the aft engine mounts, which, which are here, still not fixed up. I've got a bit of bit of angle iron here that will be going across there for, for the aft engine mounts. But I'll pop the gearbox on for now, anyhow, just to really to line up the engine mounts so we can get that mounted properly. Um, and if you just come around this way, Kerry, uh, I say, well, did this bracket on for the forward engine mount. And this bolt here, which is at the moment just sat in there, that was, that was rather seized up and I had to, uh, had to apply a well, I've put the little grinder on it and then a cold chisel, hammer and cold chisel to get it out and I should be replacing it with a bit of this, for this stud. I should cut a length of that to go through there.
this curry. Let's just have the engine mounted on them. Progressing and uh, and Hazel's here will have a look at it maybe. Um, also, spent a bit of time doing a, an initial clean up on this barrel. So I took put the airline in there and blew all the, the water jacket ways out. Cleaned about. There's a lot of rust scale in there. So cleaned that out. Cleaned up the barrel a bit. And that's just about ready to go on. I think the the piston rings probably need to clean. But anyhow. Be progressing with that in our spare time. Let's cut there. A few weeks ago, I mentioned some charity or charity effort that my brother's doing. He set up a, a YouTube channel, Climbing Kilimanjaro for Nat. And some of you had a look, some of you pledged some money to his charity there. He's raising money for cancer care, basically speaking. And him and his mate Rob are, are training. They want to walk up Kilimanjaro in May. The training for that, the videoing, the, videoing the, the training process, and, and this week they went up, they walked up Snowdon, which is the highest peak in Wales. This shit's just got quite real. There's carrots, and there's ginger up there. Silly bugger. The video's out, go and have a look and, and watch them getting snowed on and snowed on. And perhaps one last thing to say is that all the monies that they raise are going to the, the cancer charity. None of it, the, the actual costs for their travel and all of that, they're funding themselves. So any, any pledges go into the charity, the, the cancer charity for them. So, yeah. That's it for this week, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, it's very much appreciated. Thank you to all 
old and new subscribers. And if you're if you like what we do and you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. Um, it's good to hear from you. One more time, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Mm. Such as these